Hi everyone. Today I wanted to go over some points to consider if you are getting started with a light adjustable lens. While many of the points I bring up are applicable no matter what kind of lens implant you use, it is especially important with the light adjustable lens because in the early post-op period you need to get a reliable refraction that you will use to make adjustments on the lens and then lock it in. In order to adjust the strength of the lens implant after surgery, the pupil must dilate well exposing the entire lens optic to the light delivery device or LDD. Second, create a good incision that's not too long and doesn't extend too far centrally into the cornea. Incisions that extend too far centrally may result in refractive instability lasting months after surgery. And you must keep in mind that the light adjustable lens doesn't fit through a 2.2 or 2.4 millimeter incision. You're going to have to enlarge it to at least 2.75 millimeters. And so you want to avoid having a long wide incision that can alter the refraction for months after the surgery. And as long as you create a nice shelved triplanar incision, your incision will seal perfectly. And of course, always try to create a centered, round, appropriately sized rexus, regardless if you use laser or do it manually. With the light adjustable lens, you can adjust the astigmatism after surgery, so there's no need to create LRIs with the laser. This patient has a high refractive error. The cataract is on the milder side, so it's fairly easy to remove. The light adjustable lens is a three-piece lens, and I noticed it has a steeper learning curve for the technicians to load it. And so I would certainly suggest that you as the surgeon know how to load it, uh, just in case the technician has any problems. The next suggestion I have is that you polish and power wash the posterior capsule as much as possible. And the reason for that is because you don't want any PCO to affect the reliability of your refractions after surgery. You want it really clear. And this is very important with even other kind of premium lenses, for example, diffractive multifocal lenses, because if you have a PCO after surgery and the patient's unhappy, the last thing you want is to do a YAG capsulotomy only to find out the patient doesn't like their lens implant and they want a lens exchange. You're trying to identify are they unhappy because of the PCO or they just don't like the lens. And so you want to try to eliminate the PCO factor. You want to have a clear posterior capsule. And although polishing the posterior capsule with the IA tip is great, I find that flushing the posterior capsule thoroughly with BSS just gets rid of so many more lens epithelial cells that could otherwise impact the clarity of the posterior capsule. Another thing I like to do is uh, polish the uh, anterior capsule and I developed this as a habit as a defensive move. You know how they talk about defensive driving? So with diffractive multifocal IOLs, um, the less phimosis you have, the easier it will be to handle a case where a patient wants a lens exchange. Even though they're uncommon, you just want to be prepared. So trying to remove all the lens epithelial cells peripherally to minimize phimosis is a good idea for all your cases. And so here I'm going to enlarge the incision. And this is a 2.75 millimeter blade. I've done this with both 2.75 and 2.8 and I haven't noticed a difference. Perhaps it's because when you go in with the blade and you come out, maybe you don't take the exact path, but I try to make it as straight as I can and I have no problem fitting the injector into that incision. When you inject the lens, you want to watch that haptic so it doesn't point posteriorly into the posterior capsule and so you rotate the injector clockwise. And then once the haptic is out, you can rotate it back counterclockwise. The lens springs out very quickly, unlike single piece acrylic lenses. For the trailing haptic, you can either use the plunger, kind of go back and forth to catch the, the trailing haptic, or you can leave it outside the eye and use a second instrument or a McPherson to place the trailing haptic into the bag. 
the lens will usually center itself very nicely. It's always a good habit to try to center the lens on the visual axis, regardless if it's a ringed lens implant or not. Now it's time for thorough viscoelastic evacuation. You don't want to leave behind any viscoelastic or have a situation of posterior capsular block syndrome later. And you want to make sure there are no more remnants or crumbs from the cataract. Uh, just leave the eye in a better state than you found it. And finally, uh, just be ready to send the patient to pack you in their UV protective glasses. Um, they get three pairs from RX Sight on the day of surgery. One is a pair of sunglasses, the other is a pair of UV protecting readers, and the last one is a pair of clear distance UV protecting glasses. Also included in the box of UV protecting glasses is this purple silicone wristband. And I think it's a good idea that the patient wears it on their wrist so it reminds them that they have a light adjustable lens because oftentimes they may forget they had surgery and they may, they may go out without their sunglasses. So anything to help remind them is good. But uh, that's basically it. I hope you found this helpful. Thank you for watching.